Welcome to our review of Drop It by Cosmos, a physics-based game with more depth than you would think. Now, Drop It was designed by Bernhard Lack and Uwe Rapp, originally published in North America by Cosmos in 2018, with a second edition that came out in 2019. Now, the second edition is the version I own, with the only actual difference being a Parents' Choice Silver Award logo put on the corner of the box. Now, Drop It plays two to four players, more with the team play variant, with games taking about a half an hour. The box lists the age requirement at eight and up, but I don't see any real reason younger kids couldn't play as long as keep an eye on where the pieces are going in their mouth. Yeah. In Drop It, players take turns dropping squares, triangles, circles, and diamonds of their own color into a vertical game board, a tray of sorts. They then get points for how up, how far up the tray that shape ends, as well as if it's getting any um, special bonuses by touching a special bonus circle. Now, the trick here, though, is your P scores zero points if it touches a matching shape or color, which also includes the bands on the bottom and sides of the tray. Now, for a look at what you get with this unique dexterity game, check out our Drop It unboxing video on YouTube. Now, overall, the component quality here is awesome with painted birch wood pieces, a solid tray and base, and ridiculously thick cardboard <laughs> scoreboard and counters. There are also wooden blocks in each player color for tracking your score. Now, the one thing of note here is that the box insert was clearly designed to keep these game components safe, uh, especially the main gameplay tray. Now, my particular insert, as you can see in the unboxing video, was a little beat up due to this, which to me just meant it was doing its job. This is great, but I can see some game collectors being put off by having a damaged insert. So if you like your games in pristine condition, this may not be the game for you. Expect a little bit of things having moved around and a little bit of crumpled cardboard. Nice, solid components. Great table presence. Let's now move on to how the game plays. So you start by dividing up the pieces. With four pieces, it's simple. Everyone just grabs all the pieces of one color. With two, you grab all the pieces of two colors. But with three, you end up splitting the leftover color between the players. Players place their scoring marker on the zero spot on the scoring track, and someone assembles the board by choosing a restriction and configuring the sides and base of that drop area. Now, each turn, players choose one of their shapes and drop it into the tray. Then, depending on where it lands, they may or may not score points. No points are awarded if it's touching anything of the same shape or color, which includes the previously dropped pieces, as well as the bottom and edges of the board. If you had a safe drop, you get points based on the maximum height reached and bonus points if touching any of the bonus point circles. Play then passes to the next player until all players have played all of their pieces and the player with the most points wins. Now, one thing to note is that only the current drop matters. Mm -hmm. It's only the piece that was just dropped that is used to calculate points earned that turn. The fact that other pieces are going to shift, bounce, and move around has no impact on game score. Now, in addition to these basic rules, there are four variant ways to play. The first is easy mode. You just ignore the bottom and edge pieces. Pretty simple. Next, the opposite sides of the edge pieces. So the default gameplay is you're looking at colors and on the edges. You can swap those to shapes instead of colors. Another option is to play drop it in teams. This can extend the game past four players. Each team gets two colors and share pieces at a single score. Now the final variant is our favorite and it involves joker tiles. Each player gets two joker tiles, which can be spent after any drop to score a piece that otherwise wouldn't. If a player does manage to get to the end of the game with any of these jokers left, they're gonna get three bonus points per tile left over. Now that's really all there is to it. It sounds mm -hmm. simple, but picking what piece to play when can be huge. Now, I first got to play Drop It at Queen City Conquest in Buffalo, New York back in 2018, and I've been meaning to get a copy since. Back then, Sean and Deanna got to play it before me and actually taught me to play between RPG sessions. This was one of those wow moments, much like Gokuku. Uh, it's a game that, almost, that looks almost childish, but mm. as you start playing, the depth rapidly emerges and you discover just how much thought and some degree of skill is required to play this game well. 
Yeah, even back then, I was smitten with the game, and that hasn't changed. While Drop It might not look like much, there is a lot more going on here than it looks like there is. What I love most about Drop It is that it actually requires a good amount of logic, tactics, and strategy. Picking which piece to drop when, what pieces to use up early in the game, and which to save for later, and when to use your jokers, if using the optional rule, are all interesting, fun decision points. This is combined with the fun of watching what happens when you drop a piece and then being surprised when things don't go as you expect or delighted when a drop goes perfectly. Luckily, physics works the same for everyone, so the delights and anguishes are shared universally. Now, everyone I played this game with has noted on their first play that these pieces just don't move how you'd expect. Added to this is the brilliant design of the base tray, the board. The fact it tapers outwards really helps make each drop more interesting, and doing moves like hugging the cover corners way more difficult than you'd expect. So the play area is actually a trapezoid, with the top and bottom being parallel, and the usable play area is actually widest at the bottom, not the mm -hmm. top. Now the scoring system is also really done well done in this game because it pushes you to take risks in order to get that just little bit higher into that level or making sure your piece lands on one or more bonus circles. Once you played a couple rounds, you also start to pay attention to what colors and shapes the other players have, which can lead to some really cutthroat plays, especially later in the game. It is all too easy to be stuck with a piece at the end and no hope of scoring due to the shapes and colors exposed. Now we played the game multiple times in multiple different configurations and all the ways to play are fun. There is not a wrong or bad way to play drop. It. In the end though, we all seem to prefer playing with the colored sides of the boards and the Joker tiles. What I like most about the Jokers, they can offset a mistake as well as make a dead round more, in, more interesting. Instead of being dead, you get some points. But I also love the fact that if you can play well enough to avoid that situation, those jokers turn into some much needed bonus points, which could win you the game. The dead round one is a big one for me. I mean, mistakes of the bad drop type happen, though to some degree, they're going to happen less the more and more experienced you become. But getting yourself into a bad position later in the game with no opportunity to score is a potential. And the mm -hmm. joker takes away some of the stink of that. Now, I do have a couple of minor issues with Drop It, and they're both design choices. Now, the biggest one is the shape side of the edge boards. The shapes on these are rather small, and each of them is crossed out with a big X, and that X is actually bigger than the shape, which makes some of the shapes hard to see, especially on some of the narrower bands on the scoring areas. Right. The color side is far more clear, but the shape side is certainly one where you want to pause and double check as it's not obvious at a quick glance yeah i almost wish they just removed the x's like you know that those are shapes you're not allowed to touch why put an x on them now my next complaint is with the joker tiles they are just thick enough that they kind of look like the wood and they kind of look like you should be dropping them on the board along with the other pieces but they're also just thick enough that they are thicker than wood and can get stuck now, I got to say, this isn't going to be a problem for most groups and especially most groups of adults, but could be a problem if you play with small kids. Uh, even my youngest daughter, who's not all that small, uh, actually immediately when I passed her a joker at the start of the round, started reaching to drop it in to kind of see what happened. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> I mean, it's a valid investigative goal, but yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Design wise, I have one very ma uh, minor quibble, and that's how loosely the color and shape set up game pieces, both in the sides and bottom fit. I'm not sure why they're as remarkably loose a fit as they are, but depending on how you're passing it around or moving it around or, or when you're dumping it at the end between rounds, uh, they fall out. They just go fly. They go flying. They, they mm -hmm. aren't held in at all. Yeah. There's nothing to hold those on. If you flip the thing, not only are all the pieces going to come out, your sideboards are going to come out as well. Now, gameplay-wise, I can see one potential problem with this game that kind of came up in, in our plays, but we're not overly competitive. And where it's going to be a problem, where it wasn't a problem for us, is if you are playing with highly competitive players. And that's the rare edge case where you can't quite tell if a piece should score. 
does it reach a higher level or is it or isn't touching a scoring bonus or is it or isn't touching something of the same shape or color? Like they're really close and it's resting or are they touching or not? Or has it quite reached up? And what I recommend is if you do play with highly competitive players, the thing is talk about this before you play your first game. Like does a piece have to be past the level line or just touching it to count for more points? Now, we've always used the friendly debate option where if it looks close, give it to the player. It's more fun that way. Just give them the points. Yeah, yeah, it's close enough. Yeah, they don't look like they're touching. Just go for it. Now, the one trick we did find, especially for the sea of peaches that are touching, is to put a piece of white paper behind the board or something lighter than the board. And then if you can see the paper through it, they're not touching. This does make it way easier to see potential gaps. Yeah, it's the vertical score level that is the biggest concern for me. As Mo said, a sheet of paper solves the gap issue, really. But the scoring lines have a thickness. Mm -hmm. We have already seen cases where pieces are clearly on the line, but don't extend above the line, but they're on the line inside mm -hmm. that thickness. Uh, so I second the recommendation to clarify this situation up front and to be frank, I find it disappointing that the rules didn't account for this. And another thing to be aware of this in this game is because of the thickness of the plastic, your viewing angle will adjust mm. where you think things are. And you basically have to go down to get to eye level to notice whether something's above or below the line. There is and ref with refraction. <laughs> yes, is a thing. Uh, with, with playing with four players of different heights, it was shocking to see how different, say, Cat viewed the world than I did when playing Drop It. <laughs> Overall, I love Drop It when I played it back in 2018, and I love it just as much, if not more now. Back when I first played, I didn't know there were variant rules. I didn't know there were Joker tiles. I even know that was a thing. And I got to say, the best way to play at this point, as far as I'm concerned, is four players with the Jokers. Though I also dig the fact that we can play with more to four by breaking into teams which is going to make this game fantastic for public play events as it already has the table presence to draw in the, oh, what are you doing crowd? And be able to say, well, why don't you join Sean's team? You get the next drop is going to be awesome for getting people involved. Now, one note about three players. Since you're separating that fourth color into three separate sets, not everyone gets the same shapes. Yes. This could potentially be a problem if people have favorite shapes or see some advantage with shape X over shape Y, I would personally avoid three player games with those highly competitive types for that reason. That are possibly throwing a drafting mechanic where players pick which of those shapes or something. So at least it's in their hands and not an arbitrary. The rule book says take these shapes, right? Now, due to the amount of depth in this game, I actually think Drop It is going to appeal to a wide range of gamers, despite its toy-like look. There are some really solid decision points in this game, and there is skill required to play well. And unlike many dexterity games, that skill is not much more about choosing the right piece than performing the physical act of dropping well. Yeah, initial rotation angle, position, shape, color, and then potentially force and spin are all player controllable aspects, mm -hmm. which interact with the board setup and previous objects in fun and interesting ways. So I will recommend do not take a small disc and flick it from the top. The game's not designed to handle that well. Um, though there's nothing in the rules that says you can't. It was also later in the game when you did that. So there was, yes, it was. <laughs> less room for it to it go <laughs> Yes, it, we, we had an interesting thing happen. I wish someone had got it on video. Maybe I'd be TikTok famous at this point. Now, everyone I've shown this game to has loved it. I have n not seen anyone disappointed or not enjoy this game, and I don't expect that to change. This is also a fantastic game for playing in public. This is going to catch people's attention. This is going to draw a crowd. I can already hear strangers saying, what's this? What are you doing? What are you trying to, oh, so you're trying to, like, I can hear those conversations happening. Now, while in some ways, uh, as it's as like Go Cuckoo as a fun game for all ages, but I would say Drop It is actually more accessible. Mm -hmm. The steady hands and dexterity aren't as big a requirement. If yes. you're able to pick up a shape, then you can play Drop It. Yeah. This is why I think even younger kids could play this. 
and and man, talk about a learning tool for learning shapes and colors and and matching shapes. Like I I honestly like I think we would have been playing this with our kids probably as young as we played games with them. Pair up with a parent so you can go, no, no, why wouldn't you want to choose that one? Well, you don't want to touch that one. The other thing is I think heavy gamers should give this game a shot due to that the 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 logic required, the actual strategy of what do I play next and uh, I don't want to use that word. Um, stabbing your opponents in the back and taking that that move to prevent them from playing. And notice, oh, Sean has squares left and it's yellow. And look what's on that edge. I'm going to just drop a square over here. It'll get me three, but it'll make sure he gets none. Yeah. But once you allow for the rules, as we mentioned above, I would say this game can really scale with competitiveness. Mm-hmm. There are so many variables you can consider or you can just grab a piece, check the colors and shapes, drop it in. And even if you play this game 10 times in a row, you're still going to take a turn where you drop a triangle on a triangle because you didn't notice. I am personally super happy to have a copy of Drop It in my collection. I expect this game to get a lot of play in the coming years. Just kind of wish I'd picked it up earlier. Well, that's it for our look at Drop It, a unique dexterity game that requires more skill than you would think and not in the physical dexterity way most games like this do. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this review. I welcome you to also check out the written version over at tabletopbellhop.com.